welcome to the next episode. So this will be the uh, first episode that we actually fire up Unity for uh, our demo and it's just a quick one. I just want to show you about uh, how I'm setting up my folder structure um, and how to basically yeah, start out on our uh, little demo making journey. Okay, so uh, what what I've got here at the moment is I've actually made a, a basic folder structure just to help keep things organized so that I know where bits and pieces are. Um, you might you know your brain might work a different way you might want to have things all in one big folder uh, I like to sort of sort it out so that um, when I'm looking for something I know specifically where I can and go and look for it I can use folders to do that um, one of the issues though is that when you are importing several assets and asset packs sometimes they um, they'll have scripts that require a specific folder structure so it's always best to leave some of the core systems that you've got in the uh, basically as you import them in um, I'll, I'll explain that as we go along. So let's just have a look first. Um, I want all of my art assets, so obviously all of my models, all of the, the art pieces, all of the sounds and music, all that sort of stuff, to be under one big banner called Art Media. So that's my folder there. And as you can see, I've already imported several of the Sinti Polygon packs into that session there. So when I know, like, I'll go, oh, I want a 3D model, or I want this bit of um, texture, or I want this bit of this and that, I know where to look for it. I just click on that, and then I find the subfolder, go in there, and then I can sort of pick through it from that way. Um, it just it keeps all of that stuff because normally when you have several art packs, there'll be folders and bits and pieces everywhere. You're looking at thousands of different objects and that. So the more we can sort of you know narrow that down and tidy it up, um, the cleaner it makes our top folder look. Um, as you can see here, I've got the both the RPG pack and uh, both of the Invector ones on the top. Uh, sorry, the top folder. So just underneath assets. Um, can't do much about that because uh, I know. Uh, they might have tidied it up now, but I know that in the past um, several of these things can actually break or, or have some issues come up if they're not in the, the top folder. So I like to have these these ones here as my core systems, um, leave them in the top folder so that I don't play around with any of the, the scripts in that. Um, the next one here, I've actually got a folder called Game Components. Now this folder is for all of the different prefabs and all of the different things that I generate during actually making the game. So they're not part of the, the asset packs themselves, they're, they're just components or objects that I've made um, while going through the, the project's production. So as you can see here, I've split it up uh, even further than that. So now I've got a, a heading for environment, uh, items and equipment, NPCs, players and quests. So all of the prefabs and um, scripted objects, whatever we make, uh, that uh, are basically made with these template systems will all go in here in little subheaders. So that when I need to find them later on, I know exactly where they are. And we can even go further than that when we look in Environment's got its own subsection, which is um, foliage, uh, objects that you can interact with, scenery and terrains. So the terrains will be obviously the big actual terrains uh, through the Unity terrain system. Scenery will be all the different objects, like if I've got a special mountain and then it's got you know, a, a building sitting halfway up the mountain, if I want to mix some of the other objects together and make it into a prefab so that I can use it again, I'll drop it in there so I know where to find it. And same as if I adjust any of the trees, um, I can drop them in here as prefabs. Um, and then objects interacting, um, so basically switches, doors, things that I make out of some of the art components there into a prefab. I'll drop it in there so that I can always just pull it back out when I'm making a new scene. Um, same with items and equipment, so I obviously need to set up scriptable objects for some of those, um, or even just prefabs themselves. So I've split that down into weapons, um, quest and function items, so things like key cards, any stuff like that. Um, protection, so we're talking about shields um, and armor pieces, so we don't really have an armor system, so it's mainly just going to be shields. I just want to separate that from um, the weapons. Um, well, you could probably just yeah, put them in as one and put them, uh, list them as equipment, but uh, I just like to separate it because um, I like the delineation there. And then, of course, aids so all your health potions, experience, money, all those sorts of things. Um, and then, of course, NPCs, I've got that one through, so we've got allies, so that'll be your companion character. Um, civilians will be the random NPCs that are around, like the quest givers and also just people walking around the town. Um, enemies, obviously, is all your monsters and all the bad people that you got to fight against. And then guards are basically the same as allies or civilians, but um, they won't talk to you. They're basically just there to fight off any enemies that walk into a designated area. Um, and then, of course, yeah, we've got our player and our quests folder. So again, yeah, that's just there for me just to tidy things up so that I don't have... 50 million assets rocking, uh, rocking around here and then I'm trying to pick through to figure out where it is. Um, of course, yeah, these are two core systems. Then I've got scenes. So I think in uh, 2018, if you're using that one, um, you can actually, uh, despite what I said earlier, you can actually use 2018.1 um, or 0.2. Um, 
perfectly fine with this. Well, I wouldn't say perfectly fine. There are still some errors, but these errors are basically across the board and they are being worked on and fixed. Um, but uh, yeah, 2017 also has a, a few of these er errors and they are being uh, yeah rectified at the moment. So if you are using 2018, that's fine. Um, I think automatically it pops up a scenes folder for you and that's where it saves your, your starting scene. Um, here we're just going to keep it... Uh, uh, I'm going to keep that folder system so that I can save all of our scenes in this one um, thing. So if I need to jump between a scene, I can just go assets, yep, scenes on the top thing, and then just pick what scene I need. Now I've also got a subfolder here called new scene essentials. Um, that will come into play in the next episode when uh, I start setting up the play controller. And I'll just be saving out some of the prefabs that are in the hierarchy here that you require when whenever you make a new scene. So that way we can just drag and drop them straight in and we won't need to you know run the wizard to create a whole new scene. Um, anyway, moving on from that, now I've also got the subsystems folder. So this is for the non-core systems. And this is, as I said, these are some of the things like the... Um, the hardened navigation system with a compass and the simple physics toolkit. These ones here um, I've dragged into the subsystem so because they're not going to be major parts here. I don't need them in the, the top folder there. Um, as well as the post-processing and the uh, the post-processing effects from uh, Cinti as well. Um, when you're when you're trying to put some of these uh, again, like these are imported assets, when you're trying to drag them into the um, the extra folder just keep an eye on the console because it might pop up with something that's saying hang on it could no longer read this file or can't do this and that if you get any of the red warnings then it means that you've obviously broken something so just pull it back out into the top folder and let it recompile and that should fix it um yeah so just just keep that in mind um i like to use the subsystems folder so it just keeps this top folder as, as tidy as i can get it um, anyway, here we go to the console. Uh, now I haven't shown you how to import um, any of these because it's fairly straightforward. Um, I always go with uh, importing the third person controller first. I could, I, normally I'll import all the art assets first. I'll take away their demo scenes most of the time um, because they might come with their own demo scripts, stuff like that. I'll get rid of all that, just taking the actual art pieces that I need. Um, and then, uh, then after that, once I've got all the art stuff in, I'll inve uh, sorry, in import the Invector controller first. So the third person controller is the one that I can uh, comes in. Um, then on top of that, I will import the AI controller. And then after that, I'll import the RPG pack on top of all that. Because, um, yeah, it might change. When, when you're getting add-ons and things like that for different templates, you might change some of the core scripts. So you need to make sure that... Um, you know, if you import this one first and then all of a sudden you import the beta and that changes the core script that this one also changed, then this will stop working because it can't find the changes that it was supposed to make because they've been overwritten already. So, yeah, normally I like to um, I do it in, in that order. Now, just keep in mind as well, when you do uh, bring in the, the RPG pack, you are going to get a series of errors here um, uh, referring to item enums. Um, just make sure you check with the documentation, as you can see here with the quick step. Um, sorry, quick setup instructions. Uh, if you've got the old package, you need to get rid of it. Um, you bring in the new package and then you go to the resources folder, which is here, and you open this up. So you just left click and you'll see it comes up here in the inspector. All you need to do is click refresh item enums and that will clear out the errors that are on there because it obviously sets the item enums um, to the right, uh, what, to the right list. Um, okay, so that's it for basically importing. I've got everything that I need into the project and I've set it out into the different folders I need. Now let's get started on setting up our first scene, which will be this one here. Um, the first thing that I'm going to be doing uh, as the first step in the project, I'm going to bring it back here to our mind map that we've got. I think the first thing that we should start off with is actually the player controller. It's getting that set up to the way we want it to, um, at least for the most part. Um, obviously before we start bringing in world objects and interacting um, interactive world objects, enemy eye, stuff like that. Let's just focus on getting our player controller mostly set up with the controls, we'll get a prefab set up, we'll get the camera working, and then we'll start focusing on some of the other stuff like the animations um, and yeah, the controls further for attacking, things like that. So that's what we want to start with first. So going back to Unity, uh, I want to get this scene started. I'm going to actually save this scene first off. So we're going to click Save Scenes. We're going to go to our Scenes folder. And because this is going to be our player test environment, we're actually going to call it that player test environment. Because this scene, all we're going to do with it is actually just test out our player controller. So that's all we need to do with um, with this scene. So save that. And now you can see in our scenes folder, we've got our player test environment. So what we want to do, we've got our main character, we've got a directional light. 
Um, the next thing we're going to do is we can either bring in a, a terrain or a 3D plane um, to walk on. I'm actually going to use a plane because we only really need a small um, environment. We don't need a big terrain. Um, so I'm just going to use a, a basic plane. Um, we might scale that up. I might go 10. Oops, my num lock isn't on. Actually, no, I'm going to go, whoops, 15, 5, 5, 5. And you can see that should be enough space to be able to run around on um, and set all that up. So we've got our plane. Uh, it has a mesh collider. We can actually, yeah, I'm going to remove that. I'm actually just going to add a box collider because um, I think that might be a bit better to use. Uh, and as you can see, it looks pretty flat. So we want to I'm actually set that to one. And as you can see, that's pretty big. Um, obviously, we need to go 0.5 with it. So now, as you can see, it will basically, the top of that there, will sit on the actual mesh itself. And then we can just click on this to edit it. We don't need it all the way down there, but we do want it just a little bit thick so that there's no issues with um, objects clipping through the bottom of the floor. So now there, that, um, that to me just seems like a better collider for a floor. Uh, now while we're on that, so this is going to be our floor, but at the moment it's set to uh, a default layer, and we don't really have any extra layers in there um, in regards to scenery. Uh, We've got water, we've got you, I've got the basic ones, and then it goes to player, enemy, companion AI, triggers, stop, move, action, head track, and body part. Now, these are all built into the Invector controller, um, so they're all basic layers, but I don't want to just use default for all of my landscape, or while, while it's not too bad to use when we're just doing um, our little testing there, because we want to set up our player prefab to be able to handle the environment, we need to put in a little bit of forethought about um, how that environment's going to work and how we're going to... Um, have that in the future because if we start setting up our player prefab now and it does come up with um, you know it's basically set to the default layer when we start building our world later on we're going to be using different layers for things and then we'll have to go back and retroactively fix up um, the player itself so I'd like to just sort of start out by adding in a couple of layers that we might need um, specifically now I want a walk walkable layer um, actually I might uh, you know, I'm going to call it walk on me because um, walkable is also a, a part of a nav mesh tree of things. So I don't want to name something and then have it come up with an error because it's sharing a name of the nav mesh or or if the nav mesh nav, nav mesh functionality. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to keep that one there. So walk on me just basically means that it's any kind of um, object that we can actually walk onto. Um, we'll sort that out later when we need. Uh, like you know, when we've got a, an object that's popping out we only really want to be able to walk on the top of it what we can do is we can actually make that object a default object or a stop move or wherever else that we need that object to be but then we'll also put a collider on top of it and set that collider to walkable and that way when we bake our nav mesh the top part of the object will actually be walkable but the rest of it will be stop move and that, that's something that we can, we can figure out later on um, yeah, you know what, for now, I think if we're just going to set that up, that's just going to be one of the basic layers that we need. So setting that to number 16, that's fine. Now we're going to click on our plane. We're going to rename it by pressing F2 when it's selected in the hierarchy. When it's selected in the hierarchy, make sure you actually select it and have it highlighted. F2, and we're just going to call this um, ground for the moment. Because this is just our player scene. We don't need to call it, you know, grass, mound, 2, 3000, anything like that. Something crazy. It's just the ground that we're walking on. We're going to set that layer to walk on me because obviously we want to be able to walk on it. Um, it's currently bright white. That is perfectly fine. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that, let's actually just save our scene. And that's it. That's saved. That's all I really want to do with this scene uh, for this video because I wanted to keep it short and just sort of show you how we're, we're setting it up. Um, the next video is going to be on uh, setting up the player prefab. So I will catch you then.